Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. What defines technology? Today, we would almost certainly describe technology as the machines and devices which were created to make our lives easier and to do jobs more effectively, more efficiently. The technology of the ancient world, the architecture we see equipped, even built with ancient technology. Technology predating the year 1900, predating the modernization of electricity, predating the Industrial Revolution. We have centuries of unique technology, but the old world seemingly has hidden a miraculous cornucopia of these unique and mysterious machines within our narrative. For our ancient ancestors, however, the driving force behind their technology, or rather, the spark which ignited the ideas which would become modern technology, began with rudimentary experiments which look to improve the facets of everyday life. Imagine a city, fully functional, one which provided for its residents in such a way that the struggles of the hunter-gatherer lifestyle are a long-forgotten remnant of the past. Shelter, as they call it, is a basic need for every living creature on Earth. The earliest technology would become the structures, the large, fortified walls, the step-like pyramids found across the earth, the raised platforms and raised entrances built upon the highest points in the landscape. For in the most ancient of cultures, we repeatedly have one major culprit which seemed to influence the technology of early cities. That is, the universal flood legend. For this reason, we're told, the earliest cities were built upon elevated locations we now refer to as mounds and tells, amounting to a telling yet misunderstood history. These cities were built upwards, but what else makes for ancient technology? Surely, the intricate designs of early cities and structures, often symmetrical and gargantuan buildings in the ancient world, constructed at the highest points in their respective cities, were formed with the highest regard for architecture. We see systems of theories which seem to shape the ancient world. We have hundreds of what we're told are unrelated structures like the pyramids found in Africa, Russia, Asia, and the Americas, Structures built throughout the world in ancient times, all with similar construction, similar patterns, leading to parallel shapes and symbols being found in different kingdoms, which we are told had no relation to one another. Do these anomalies lend credence to the concept of a unified society before a major flood or cataclysm? If the flood myth unified the ancient world, what technology could be employed to fight against it? Elevated cities, but today we will look at elegant water systems of the old world. What else shaped the ancient technologies of these cities? I'd like to now focus on Hama. Hama, in modern day Syria, has been one of the most important towns in Middle Eastern history, serving as the basis for numerous historical and romantic publications regarding the ancient technology found within, or Antiquitech. We also for lack of a better term, have the conflict going on in the Middle East right now, and we'll look at Hama in Syria, which was once home to dozens of massive wheels which connected to the major fortifications of the city, including the king's quarters, providing relatively fresh water to a majority of the city, and this has been occurring for the last 600 years. Furthermore, these inventions, this technology, known as Norias, became renowned with the ancient water wheels of Hama being considered the precursor to hundreds of massive water wheels then founded around the world. However, remarkably, the wheels of Hama have not only survived multiple ancient wars, but they even survived the Syrian civil war of 2011, where they were said to be one of the most important ancient structures by President Bashar Assad. The water wheels of Hama are two of the three largest in the world. Hama having originally many dozens of these ancient achievements. 17 of Hama's original wheels have been preserved today. They are notable for their origins, untouched for almost 500 years. Famous even through the Renaissance times for their large number and for the enormous size of two of them. For 500 years, these were the tallest water wheels in the world, with the largest being 69 feet in diameter. They were replaced on the list of the largest water wheels by a larger wheel that was constructed on the Isle of Man, which was 73 feet in diameter. However, that wheel on the Isle of Man is much more modern and features large architectural supports. The ancient water wheels of Hama have been a point of contention and pilgrimage for people into Syria 
for hundreds of years. This is ancient technology at its finest. Furthermore, the concept of water wheels appears to tie back directly to Mesopotamia and Babylonia, as we have numerous depictions of the deities and kings of these lands being showcased with wheels resembling water wheels, gears, the components to the ancient machines, and these inscriptions seem to indicate that the original deities, the first kings of the world, the first to introduce the feudal system, achieved this status through their understanding and use of water wheel technology. Entire cities were said to have been constructed around the water wheel, which in return mediated the need for advanced aqueducts, canals, and aquifers for the storage and distribution of the water produced by the wheels. The earliest cities thrived and grew based off their use of advanced technology, including water wheel systems and aqueducts. Furthermore, these original 600-year-old water wheels in Hama have not only stood the test of time, but appear to be fully functional to this day, showcasing just how impactful and long-standing true technology can really be. The water wheels in Hama have massive axles and bearings of walnut wood, while poplar is widely used for the other parts of the wheel, as well as foreign trees of both pine and oak. However, all of this was said to be made of wood, yet it has lasted the last 600 years. The water delivery of the Hamas wheels ranges between 50,000 and 200,000 liters per hour, depending on the water wheel's size. Now, we can discuss if these are inherited technology. The water wheels seem to be providing clean water, but they could be something of an advanced system that is much older. We look at cooling systems, leftover pieces of older, even larger technology, and structures which were formed when the last major cultures transitioned to the modern feudal systems. We see massive wheels, and they become a component of the inherited or founded technology, as well as the technology of the Industrial Revolution. As each of the earliest world's fairs, makes use of these massive gears, culminating in the Ferris wheels we see in the late 18 and early 1900s. As you can tell, the Ferris wheels, the massive Ferris wheels of the late 1800s and early 1900s greatly resemble the ancient water wheels. We're told that the water wheels of Hama are always immediately downstream from a weir, a low dam which ensures that river power is concentrated through a channel leading to the water wheel. The wheel then discharges water into aqueducts that are built on tall stone arches and sometimes built directly into buildings. To catch the water, each aqueduct has a very short section that's parallel to the water wheel and parallel to the river. For nearly 500 years, the earlier mentioned Noria al Mahamadiya was the tallest water wheel in the world, only being surpassed in 1854 by the fortified water wheel on the Isle of Man. When these water wheels were being used for irrigation, the aqueducts eventually fed into massive water channels, which were able to supply multiple fruit and vegetable gardens, palaces, and the residential buildings. To wrap up the video looking at these amazing photographs, the first photographs in history of these amazing water wheels of Hama, I can't help but think that they look like cogs in a much larger, much older machine. They could be part of a system. Now, I do not know the exact purpose for the system other than what we've been told in the narrative, but we can certainly throw out theories and hypotheses. These look like part of a cooling system, and I've entertained a theory before, as have many of you that have been on my channel, of the circuit board Earth. Could ancient structures like ancient cities Built with water wheels on nearly every building, could this design actually lend credence to the circuit board earth myth? Or rather, could technology that we founded throughout the last thousand years actually have a larger overall purpose? Could it all be interconnected? Could technology, even in its most rudimentary form, could these water wheels be part of a much larger, much more complex system, which has long controlled our narrative and been hidden? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below.